So we all know that smartphones have been designed to be the ultimate spying devices. Case in point, Apple has been caught collecting your detailed usage information even if you opt out. Google is tracking your location even if you turn it off entirely. And the predatory advertising industry is gathering, selling, and sharing your data with no precautions, making you fall victim to scammers, fraudsters, part tripping cops, and other bad actors. And of course, the big tech is now getting backlash for the dystopia they are so willingly creating and building for all of us. So now they are all telling us that they take our privacy seriously and do everything they can to protect it. Case in point. But how can you trust their claims? All of this is really just marketing. Is there a method that's based on evidence that can tell us which options are actually private? Yes, that's what we are going to do in this video. We are going to analyze which phone in the market is currently the most private option for you. And now there are myriads of phones to choose from. So to keep things simpler, here is what I decided to do. We'll make the iPhone its own category, which will compete against Pixel phones from Google. Then all the remaining Android vendors will be grouped into one category. I'm singling out Pixel here for reasons that will become clear later. Then we'll also have to test all of these against AOSP forks, because they do offer some advantages as well as come with some disadvantages. And from among them, Rafin OS will also be singled out due to the facts that will be explained along the way. So as we go along, you'll get a strong grasp on what makes a phone private and what doesn't. And by the end, you'll get a total score. I encourage you to follow this method and see if you can reproduce the results or come up with something else. Feel free to post your own findings on my subreddit or Patreon. Now, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Hey, if you enjoy this sponsor-free content, support me on Patreon and unlock access to all of my podcasts, get early access to everything ad-free, and you can even get my merch. My content is very adversarial to social media algorithms, and it clearly shows in my YouTube analytics. This work cannot survive without your support. So please become a paid member on Patreon and join me in this fight from within. Thank you kindly. How do we decide how private any given phone is? Well, you can ask people who have something to sell you, or you can do something like a benchmark to test the phone against. Our benchmark is gonna be a privacy threat model called Linden. Linden is basically just a list of seven privacy threat categories. These threats encompass everything personal data on your phone can be exposed to, from creepy advertisers and data brokers, through hackers and government agencies, to bad practice and conduct at the companies themselves. Linden was built for privacy engineering, and we are not engineers, but we can still use this. We will take these seven threat categories and measure how much each phone is exposing our data to each threat. We'll go by each Linden category and assign a point for when a phone is vulnerable to a privacy threat. So the more points a phone gets, the worse it is for your privacy. This is going to be very easy to follow and reproducible. So if you think I got something wrong, you can follow this method yourself and offer your perspective. So let's get started. The first and the most immediate privacy threat is going to be linkability. What is linkability? Linkability is whenever two pieces of data are related or linked roll credits. For example, your travel patterns can be linked to your identity by tracking your license plate, or whatever you buy in store can be tracked over time based on your debit card. So how does this relate to smartphones? The iPhone immediately scores several points. In order to use the iPhone in any capacity, you need to create an Apple account and connect it to the internet. This will immediately broadcast all unique identifiers from your phone to Apple. Apple will then use that information to uniquely profile your phone and track all of your usage data, at least for the duration of your account. Apple will track your activity and data across Apple apps and services. That means the iPhone's course points on linkability of credentials, usage data, flow of personal data, and metadata. But Apple does abide by principles of data minimization, and they are processing more and more of your data on device rather than in the cloud. So they won't get any more points on linkability. Google Pixel has all the same data collection problems as Apple does, but by default, Google does share more data with third parties than Apple, so I have to give Pixel a point on linkability of shared data. Google also implements data minimization and also processes more and more data on device, so Pixel won't get any more points on linkability. 
The same, however, can't be said of the rest of Android vendors. They often ship their phones with unnecessary pre-installed apps with privileged permissions. That bloatware cannot be deleted and its permissions cannot be revoked, so data collection is completely out of hand here. Other than Google, Android vendors rarely abide by any security and privacy principles whatsoever. They collect more than they need, retain it for longer and sell it to third parties without any restraints. So all other Android phones and vendors get all points on linkability. Now Android is an open source operating system, which means anyone can take it and make its own version from it. This is where forks of AOSP or Android open source project and Graphene OS take their stand. Because of the open nature, you're not forced to use a Google account or any unnecessary bloatware with these forks. However, there is a difference between Graphene OS and the rest of AOSP. Graphene OS is the only Android fork that significantly enhances the application sandbox to the point no app on your phone has any privileged access whatsoever. On top of that, Graphene OS is the only OS that allows you to create fully isolated user profiles where you can install privacy invasive apps and keep them separate from your private data. This significantly reduces the privacy exposure to all linkability threats even if you end up installing privacy invasive apps. If you install them on other AOSP forks, you're pretty much just as exposed as in stock Android minus the bloatware. So I'll give AOSP forks 5 points on linkability and I'll give Graphene OS 0 points. The next privacy threat, very closely related, is identifiability. You are exposed to identifiability whenever you are required to provide identifiable information such as your email address, phone number, home address, or via purchasing methods. You can also be identified without any identifiers whatsoever. Your patterns of behavior can reveal who you are in case of extensive and prolonged data collection. And this is where it goes downhill for most smartphone options. To use the iPhone, you have to create an Apple account and activate it over the internet. This immediately gives Apple your email address, phone number, payment method, IP address, and all the hardware identifiers from your phone. The same is true for when you create a Google account on Android, although it must be said that it is possible to use Android without an account. And because both Google and Apple are collecting detailed usage and personal data over a long period of time, your usage, behavior, and metadata will be identifiable. Apple and Google also store your data with identifiers that are unique per profile or tied to your account. So for the class of identifiability threats, both the iPhone and Pixel get 5 points. Other Android vendors are guilty of the same and much more. Again, preloading phones with privileged apps that can be removed or contained is a privacy disaster. That bloatware will always collect personal and identifiable information, and there are zero privacy guarantees as to what happens to it when it leaves your phone. So all Android vendors get 7 points on identifiability. For all AOSP forks, including Graphene OS, no identifiable information is ever required. However, Graphene OS sufficiently prevents all third parties from obtaining identifiable information from your phone, for instance, by a full MAC address randomization or stronger application sandbox that bars third party apps from tracking you across those apps and services. There's only one identifiable data point that not even Graphene OS can protect you from, and that's your device IMEI. That information leaks to telecom companies when you use cell radio, i.e. when not in an airplane mode. So all in all, Graphene OS gets one point for identifiability. With other AOSP forks, the only privacy benefit is that you can easily use them without a Google account, but they expose you to the same amount of information to third parties as stock Android minus the bloatware. So AOSP forks get three identifiability points. The third privacy threat is non-repudiation, which is basically just the opposite of plausible deniability. So to understand this whole threat, it revolves around the question, can you use your phone anonymously or without detection? There are increasingly more and more cases when this is required, as we do more and more sensitive stuff on our phones. We trust them with tracking our health and fitness, including mental health. It's used for tracking periods, managing finances, or dating. There are many use cases where it's important that you can plausibly deny having used a service. This is why it is crucial to be careful who you trust your data with. Now, Apple and Google collect personally identifiable information from you. But for this thread, that in isolation wouldn't be sensitive unless using them is literally illegal in your country. 
where it becomes extremely sensitive is through the logging of requests between apps and services by these companies. They log and store your interactions along with your personal data, which makes your use of these services undeniable. And all of this makes it very lucrative to go to these companies and request that data. That's why geofence requests from government agencies are now so frequent and are often used for prosecution and persecution. Whenever Apple or Google get a request for user data, they also get all of these sensitive logs that are now tied to your account and profiled and stored somewhere. The very same applies to other Android phones and AOSP forks if you use them with Google services. The only phone that has full plausible deniability is Graphene OS, and that is even if you use Google. That's because Graphene OS makes it so that not even Google nor anyone else, including the Graphene development team, have access to any hardware identifiers, and it's impossible for them to know what individual phone you specifically are using. So Graphene OS gets zero points on non-repudiation, Pixel, the iPhone, and AOSP forks get three, and all other Android vendors get all five due to the unnecessary involvement of privileged third parties with pre-installed access. Now the next class of threats is detectability. Detectability is the ability to observe whether a data point exists or not, even if the contents cannot be seen. So for example, if I grab your encrypted card, I could see there is data on it, I just can't see the contents of the data. In almost all cases, detectability threats will come from external sources. All phone companies, including Graphene OS, will make the traffic between the apps on your phone and outside services detectable. The only way to prevent this is by turning on an airplane mode or leaving your phone in a Faraday bag, that is, not using your phone at all. Only Graphene OS can still be usable and avoid detection by using it as a Wi-Fi only device and with a trusted VPN, which is exactly how I use my phone. Doing this, you avoid all cell traffic and Graphene OS will completely anonymize your phone to any Wi-Fi network you connect to. No other phone can do this, so all phone options except for Graphene OS get two points on detectability. The next privacy threat is data disclosure. This pertains to data practices, i.e. what these companies do with their information, as well as data security, i.e. do they properly secure it against breaches, leaks, and unauthorized access. Apple and Google do some great things to minimize unnecessary data collection. They introduce more and more ways of how to keep your data on device rather than processing it in the cloud. They inject noise into data they do collect in order to anonymize it. And they also federate machine learning for certain smart and AI features on your phone so that only aggregated data is used for training their AI models. Both Google and Apple also abide by minimal retention of your personal data, and they in fact do not share your personal data with third parties unless necessary for the service. They enforce this with increasingly restrictive permissions and new pop-ups are asking for your consent. So there is a lot of positive development here. However, they still do a lot of unnecessary data collection and analysis in my opinion, as they do collect and process all of your usage data across apps and services on your phone. But there is one thing to note. Apple Apple does offer end-to-end -end encryption of iCloud data, it's not enabled by default, but it's there, which covers more personal data than Google's cloud encryption. And to distinguish this difference, iPhone gets two points on data disclosure and Pixel gets three. AOSP forks benefit from Android's privacy features, but they don't do anything above that. The only exception is Graphene OS that treats all apps as third-party apps and can completely restrict privacy-invasive apps and fully compartmentalize user profiles. So AOSP forks get 3 points and Graphene OS gets 0 points. As for the other Android vendors, because of the unnecessary bloatware, overreaching permission access, neglected security, and terrible privacy practices, they get all 5 data disclosure points. All that remains now is the last 2 privacy threats unawareness and non-compliance. These are soft threats that stem from bad conduct and practice at phone companies and developers, which happens all the time given the frequency of terrible data breaches. Things in these threats include lack of transparency, intentionally bad user controls to make it more difficult for you to opt out of data collection, lack of portability for your data, i.e. the walled garden cancer, collecting and sharing your data without your consent, collecting more than strictly necessary, retaining more information and for longer than necessary, and automating decisions on your behalf without informing you. 
Pretty much all tech companies are guilty of this, and that is true for Apple, Google, and all smartphone vendors. Apple and Google are at least trying to minimize unnecessary processing and collection, but Android vendors are proactively trying to do the opposite. The iPhone's biggest hurdle is how hard Apple is making it for users to migrate to different services that aren't Apple. That issue isn't nearly as bad on Android. Both companies let you easily delete all of your data, but their privacy controls are still intentionally muddied in my opinion. They do provide consent controls, but they've been caught multiple times in the past ignoring or neglecting that consent. I also think their privacy marketing is misleading and they don't properly inform users of the true scale of data collection they are doing. So for unawareness and non-compliance, the iPhone gets 6 points, Pixel gets 5, and Android vendors get all 10 points, cause fuck them now. As for AOSP forks, none of them sufficiently mitigate these threats except for GrapheneOS, thanks to its fully compartmentalized user profiles. So GrapheneOS gets 0, and other forks get 5, the same as Pixel. This concludes the Linden benchmark. Now we have the final score, so what is it? In the last place, we have Android vendors with 36 points. It couldn't get any worse than this. Next, we have the Google Pixel with 22 points, tying the iPhone or almost tying. Second position is taken by the broad class of AOSP forks at 20 points, and the first place is taken by GrapheneOS with only one point. This video has been brought to you with zero sponsorship interest. There are no affiliate links here either. I'm pretty much only sustained by Patreon at this point. Please go to my page at patreon.com forward slash the hated one and become a member to get early access to all of my podcasts, exclusive content, posts, and even merch. Thank you kindly.